Today's episode, Fire Beetles. Why did it have to be Fire Beetle? And then mouth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh, wait, did I do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, one too many. I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> Action surge, bum, 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 kill them all. All right. All right. Welcome, everybody, to Bears and Dragons. Uh, oh, we're wrong through. Are much better. Uh, we're a bunch of us new ass bears that around and play Dungeons and Dragons. That felt very anticlimactic. Anyways. Okay. I see somebody uh, 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 drew a uh, template <laughs> for, for, for future use. Um, that's okay. I did that in a session on Monday. So I'm like, hmm, well, I know exactly what that is. All right. So previously, I'm per Previously on Bears and Dragons, what happened last time? Durgar. You still got uh all that you've got stool, obviously, because stool is baby. Shushar, Prince Darendel. No, you got Ront. Yeah, your boyfriend Ront. We got Sereth. Well no, Sereth Sereth is fine. I don't know what you're talking about. Hey guys, um, we have a problem here. Um, they happen to be looking right at you and are coming in your your direction. Uh, I I will definitely say that. Uh, uh Jim Jar currently has his 
Mine's out. So let me make sure. Let me make sure I got everybody here. Uh, well, while we're at it, I need you guys to roll initiative. A better way to start it, start a uh, session than with initiative, right? I don't know. Do you have any idea? Uh, I would say that you're almost to the end of your long rest. I suppose you. I suppose you could roll a a hit die to uh, or or two. Yeah. I would say that say that you're back. It's funny. We don't have a lot of uh, characters in handling. Not at all. No. Okay. You guys are a level five, right? Yeah. Looks like. Cool. Um... All right, let's see here. All right. All right, so at the beginning of your combat, actually, let's uh, get some music. Well, we already have that, but we need additional music. Up that. There we go. All right. Top of the round, uh, Gage goes first, and that's not what I wanted to copy. There you go. 
and copy. And a, a shadow of Gage appears right here. And he moves up here. All right. He's going to make attack against one. Ooh. And eh, it's not going to miss. He's going to miss on that one. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't roll for the fire beetles. Silly me. There we go. That's perfect. So, roll twice here. Um, nope. <laughs> so, so uh, shadow shadowy version of Gage appears right in front of one when the fire beetles while he dashes up to to another and they both it looks like simultaneously swing their swords and completely miss this a little fire beetle these fire beetles Thyra I think your I think your uh, thing just uh uh worn off your madness Yeah, I'm going to say say that it probably wore off by now. So you can speak. <laughs> I mean, might still it might still be a good idea. Do, do, do. All right, roll damage. Ready to, uh, okay. Cool, they all die. <laughs> oh, and it actually probably covered this, it hit this one too, so. <laughs> okay, okay, after after swinging his sword, he looks up, sees gone, and then he kind of looks at his sword, like, "Whoa!" <laughs> he looks at his echo, and it's like, and they both shrug at each other. All right. <laughs> By the way, you, yeah, I, I'm not sure if you notice, I didn't roll deck saves for him. <laughs> Uh, Darndell's gonna come up here. Oh, did I ask? Oh, because I deleted the, the thing, so. Where? Uh, add turn, fire beetles, 19. There you go. The resort. Uh, there we go. Cool. The uh, fire beetles, though, let's say. Put your feet. All right. They're just going to line up. They're going to make attacks at Gage. Or buddy Adam. Uh, one. Uh, that one. Two. Uh, that one hits. I need to. <laughs> <laughs> So the first one 
a laugh bites at the echo and this is the second one bites at the echo and it disappears goes poof third one misses and the fourth one misses so misses horrendously this this is probably not going to take long so Darren Dell comes up uh and can't quite reach him but he seems to growl in a bestial roar, which is kind of unlike him. Ishar. Comes up here to, to get him a position. Uh, Sarah, Sarah uh, kind of hides over here. Maybe hey, around. Uh, Jim Jar. Gonna move up where this guy was. Makes a couple of attacks with the short sword. Uh, misses and misses. They're they're hard to hit little buggers. Roderick. Okay. What's the DC? Okay. First one makes it. Second one doesn't. Third one doesn't. And last one doesn't. Okay. You, you gotta love it when there's a fight that looks threatening, but then doesn't. And you gotta punch in, you completely whiff. Okay. To that last one. Cool. All right. It's dead. Okay. The battle's over. Oh, that was a little anticlimactic. Uh, sorry. Sorry, guys. You go back to sleep. Everything's fine now. Okay. Well, let's see here. You you've been doing this thing where you've been talking but moving your your or you've been moving your mouth as if you were talking and trying to actually talk. And Roderick, call me a D10. I mean, if you want to. Uh, <laughs> it's not an ability check. I'm just asking to roll a D10. Two? Okay. Um, strangely enough, you don't know where these uh, fire beetles have been, but for some reason they have stuck under their wings uh, the 19 copper pieces.
Uh, I suppose. You do an investigation check. Yeah, it seems to 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 have you can determine that they it kind of came from a uh from a, the west. No, it was Darendel that was growling. The Quagoth. Who thinks he's an elf? Or, well, I cor correction. Who says that he's actually an elf that's been polymorphed to the Quagoth? Uh, yes, yes. Um, sorry, sorry about my behavior before. I don't know what came over me. Oh, well, it happens on occasion when I get in the thick of a battle or something. It is slightly little unbecoming. I apologize. Yeah, sure. Mary, what are you trying to to determine specifically? That he's lying? That he's hiding something? Yeah, it, it, you you have seen seen him uh, do battle where he's using his claws and tearing in just like a normal quagoth. Um, um, you could intuit that this was like a natural instinct of a quagoth, just to growl. He didn't quite get to his creature, get to the creature, so he growled, ready to hit one, but he never got a chance because, well, you and <laughs> Roderick, well, you and Roderick <laughs> annihilated them. Well, besides the fact that I look like this hairy beast of a man, I'm perfectly fine. Well, I'm sure it will be, it'll be much better once uh, this enchantment is gotten rid of. They're they're pretty big, medium size. Well, they're small size, but for for a regular beetle, they're quite large. Maybe a little larger than a gnome, or a little smaller than a gnome, just a little bit. Sure. Drag a uh, fire beetle corpse. Into the room. All right. I want two checks. A nature check and a medicine check. Okay, yeah. 
Okay, so you you naturally speaking wise, your your nature knowledge gives you an idea of what your standard fetal anatomy might be. A medicine check is for your ability to dissect it without with precision, essentially. So you've never really dissected a beetle before. You just kind of like maybe read some books or something where you, where it talks about the anatomy of various um, non-verb invertebrate uh, insects. Um, and it's kind of large, so you're not quite sure what, where to, to cut and everything. So you kind of make a little bit of a mess, um, but you can determine it's just a very large beetle. That's all it is. Mm. Okay, so you're basically going to practice dissection. Instead of bringing them in, you just go out to them. Okay. You do not gain the benefits of a long rest, but I will say that you rested enough that you really have to re constitute caution. Everybody goes back to bed, finishes their long rest, so everybody but Laster can take a look, officially take a long rest. Welcome back. Everybody returns to consciousness. I believe Jinjar was the last watch so he he just he's been watching Lassiter and kind of keeping an eye out while he works his magic um Lassiter roll me a medicine check with advantage mm-hmm Okay. By the end of the night, uh, you feel the, like you've you've like the last one was perfect dissection, and you've also determined that this was just a really large beetle. Right, you've you've sep you've dissected it enough that it looks like each of the pieces could easily be put back together, um, if necessary. Probably uh, mount it. Use it like tax taxidermy that sort of thing. I mean, you would still need to learn a little bit about how to taxidermy thing, but you you have all the pieces that are in a pristine condition that probably with help with somebody who deals with, you know, like mounting, you know how people mount heads in their lodges for, as their trophies, like a deer head for taxidermy, that sort of thing. You could easily set it up so it looks like it was still alive.
it was kind of this it was hard to tell because being the underdark because it's not that light uh but it looked pretty dark You, you, you like initially take the dagger with two fingers, <laughs> even though it was already cleaned off with presentation. You don't want to touch any of Lassiter. <laughs> just, just, just uh, 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 a beetle icker just disappears off of you, evaporates. A uh, gold, a gold uh, pseudo dragon lands on your head. Starts licking up some of the, the remaining residue. Uh, you, you see this, you see this upside down, this, so Cyrus sees this gold, uh, 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 pseudo dragon on top of your head. He's kind of licking the side of his, his head. Lasser looks up, looks up to Adam says, do you eat? And then this, uh, uh, serpentine head just kind of, cur uh, curls over, to look directly into Lassiter's eyes, eyes upside down, and this goes, eh! and uh, you get kind of this sense of no. <laughs> you get, you also get the sense he can eat. He just doesn't need to. So you could make him happy by feeding him some something, but. So, moving on. What are we doing today? All right. I need off to crack this dude. Do, 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 do. Um, uh, Sarah says, I'm not sure how far we are from Netherlight Grove, but I know it's that direction. But based off the information you had and the time you've taken uh, and uh, a couple of your speedier endeavors, uh, you feel that you've made up time. You know that initially, according to Bupito, it would take you a month, uh, practically a month to get to or, or the three, 10 days, actually, in order to get to Cracklestug, a little short than that. So you probably may, you could guess that you've made up some some time. Boop, 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 boop. You've moved one hex. All right. So, how fast are you moving?
the norm base. Uh, you do get to a place which is quite dark. Uh, there is, doesn't seem to be as much phosphorescent uh, lichen or, or fungi. You can only see by whatever light that you provide, which I believe some of you might actually have to spell light. So. I need a d20 roll. I will... Let anybody do it. Cool. All right, roll me another D20. As you are, are walking along through a cavern, it breaks out into, or through the caves of the Underdark. You break through to what looks to be a massive lagoon uh, off the Dark Lake. Surrounding it, and even upon the shores, are thousands and thousands different fungi. It's... Yeah, you've probably seen a few few of them before. I mean, I don't think you've taken the time to, like, identify or figure out what it actually is. Uh, or, or ask around. Uh, at least you didn't say so. Um, but... You basically would kind of have to kind of cut a path here. Looks like it's just all over the place. Yeah, it's going to slow it. You could easily cut cut your way through. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. How long does that last? One minute? Okay. So you all stand back as uh, this owl goes flying through and breathing fire along the shore or near the, a path near the shore and just, just surrounding as it curves around. Um, Sova is able to easily find an exit to this cavern at uh, this inlet, I suppose. 
and is able to easily clear a path. You do see that as Sova is is breathing on a few of them, uh, you see some spots where this cloud of something just bursts out as they breathe on it. Oh, that, that must be Timisk. Um, they're poisonous. Maybe if you like pull them out or 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 you you destroy them, they expel a uh, cloud of poisonous spores. I would, I would probably stay here for a little bit until it settles. I didn't see him. You do see see it. Uh, you do see at a couple places where she breathes. Uh, there are a couple that are just. Uh, you still see some that are still existing. They're just little on fire, like a torch. Yeah. There is a sudden explosion that happens in the in the cavern. Oh, that must have been a torch stock. Well, uh, they come in handy. You can light them up like a, a torch. But... They're kind of volatile. Some of them will explode instead of just lighting up like a normal torch. Um, well, right now, anything that would be poisonous would be gone. That's why they, when you, when you destroy them, they shoot out the spores. So they're probably gone. Yeah, I mean, if you don't it, it, like the the poisonous ones, if they're they're about this big, and he like just puts his hand about as tall as he is, so about two feet, um, and, and they got like orange and red stripes, but if you leave them alone, they won't do anything. But the the one that exploded was probably a torch stock, which uh, uh, they're combustible caps. He kind of points at his head. Um, they, you can light them up like a torch, but uh, some of them, uh, depending on the age and other factors, um, uh, when you light them, they'll just explode. I think that's what happened with one of them. You can see that some of those 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 burning ones over there. He points out, and there's a few dots of just the something is just still on fire. Those are torch stocks, and those are probably more stable. Otherwise, they would have exploded. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm a top me a bottom.
Okay. Uh, it's probably a couple miles to go around it. Yeah, to where Sova found the exit. Uh, yeah, they, they're still lingering. It's only been a couple of minutes. Are you going to try to uh, 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 flash tornado-ish? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Stool will go ahead and get on your back and climb up on you. He says, you know, if we just wait like a half an hour, it'll probably settle down. And we'll stay. So okay. But um, um, I technically still breathe. Oh, okay. Okay, so as you travel with with uh, a stool, uh, you do get um, he he does preview on some of the fungi of the underdark. Mm. Sure. All right, uh, Roderick, go ahead and and roll me a uh, dexterity check with advantage, and then you can add your e four. Like the Flash, Roderick uh, will <laughs> we need to get a four and create everything. A 32. So uh, with blinding speed, uh, these, this, these astral arms uh, create a wind, wind like a A, a what is it? A wind machine type effect. It's just wind machine. <laughs> you know those really powerful fans. Uh, uh to uh, basically disperse the poisonous spores as you travel down the path that uh, Sova cleared. Just, just back and whoosh, blinding speed. Hmm. 
Okay. Roll me a D30. Slash roll. <laughs> slash R, not R slash. All right. So uh, along the path, um, you're able to identify uh, the appropriate ones based off of uh, information that Stool provides you. And uh, you only spend 13 darts. Uh, otherwise, all of the rest of them are pretty much uh, non-dangerous. Not dangerous. Mm. Plus The path, the path is, the path is pretty clear anyway, so. So they made a nice clear path. It, uh, is, is there a reason somebody's rolling in a survival check? I haven't asked for one. Yep, that's all there is. How's your survival? There's survival. No, what what's your uh, 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 survival ability, um, skill modifier? That's what they're wondering. To be at the bottom of your skills list. Yeah. I just just came across a fungal ca a cavern. Uh, Sova just cleared a path uh, using some dragon's breath granted to her by Syra. And uh, Roderick is now clearing the path of any poisonous gases that may have been caused by the destruction of fungi. I mean, if you're not touching anything, you could easily just walk through. And... Plus, now you guys have learned what are the bad mushrooms. Yeah, if you look at the handout I gave you. One guy of the Underdark. Uh, there's a, also a non... Uh, there's a, a non-handout version called Fungi of the Underdark. Mm-hmm. It's it's basically the picture that's in the uh, regular part. Oh, the oh wait a minute, the fungi of. Oh, you probably only see the pictures. Hold on. 
I, I now I now see it says GM notes only visible to GM. <laughs> Hold on. Let's let's do this. I'm going to select all, copy, pasta, save changes. All right, now the regular one that says fungi is the underdark should have all the infor all the information. <laughs> Probably should have edited it a little to the uh, not be more so specific about its effects, but but being a mushroom person, I would think he would know mushrooms. You make it through the cavern, go into to some further caves, uh, end up near the shore of the Dark Lake. You've been walking for quite a while. You're ready. Some survival checks to see if you can find a good place to rest. Yes. Roderick on the ball. All right. Um, near the, I'm, I'm going to actually say near the end of this uh, cavern uh, around the uh, inlet lagoon um, off the dark lake, uh, you do see a nice little, like, mushroom circle almost uh, which seems to to have a bunch of tall zerkwood uh trees uh but just around the corner you see see a nice little entrance and it's almost like it's almost a zerkwood hut if it weren't if it had like doors and and other things uh they're they're it's clear it's like a clearing almost uh, but it, the kind of the entrance to this little clearing amongst the pseudo Zerkwood forest uh, is pretty hidden from the path that you carved. Or that Sova carved, I should say. You did spot a few of the um, torch stock, some additional torch stocks that were a little further off from the beaten path. Um, which you could harvest to, to uh, use as torches if necessary. Otherwise, if, yeah, looking around uh, nearby for any of the uh, Timisk, um, you didn't see any in the, their near, nearby vicinity. I uh, still would definitely be able to say that, oh, um, this is pretty... This little clearing here, it's pretty safe and uh, it's nice and cozy. Uh, for the Timisk, um, you would it would need to be you want to probably make sure that that the entrance is really clear, because uh, still would say that it goes about fifteen feet from whenever the Timisk explodes um, uh, in the spores. Um, well, it does it whenever you upward it. So even if you just try to harvest it, it will explode in spores. But really, no real safe way to to harvest it and change it into a trap. You'll probably do that, and there might be some leftover. So if somebody like steps on one to just and destroys it, it might shoot off some more, but it might be less potent, or or it might not. It might end up being a, a dud because it uses spores from when you originally uprooted it. So.
we're hoping to resolve some stuff. Is there anything anybody would like to do before heading down for the evening? For the evening. Uh, he doesn't know a lot. Like he, one of the things for like general survival is mother ta taught him was about these different mushrooms, and um, so that's pretty much the extent of it. Uh, he does know about the rep the rapport spores that a lot of his people are able to emit. Uh, so many times a day. Um, there are other kinds, but he was, uh, that is people can't admit, but uh, he's not quite aware of them. But otherwise, not much. He doesn't have much more to really tell you. Lester, roll me 3d6. Are you sure about that second one? Okay. Okay, so five of the first, six of the last. Right. After a clarification. <laughs> uh, let's see. Right. Any anything else anybody would like to do in uh, before heading off into your watches? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. I need you to, or last, or I need you to roll me a Constitution saving throw. Okay. It tastes spongy. It, it's got a weird texture, doesn't really have much flavor, kind of bland. But nothing's happening. You just see Lassiter bring up this. You'd swear it looks like a human tongue, um, a really large human tongue, and he just starts gnawing on it.
Well, he's 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 not saying anything, so I'm assuming that he's he's fine. Um, the thing is, Stool told Roderick. <laughs> Only Roderick. And maybe, and Syrah, probably. Uh, but, uh, I, I don't think you necessarily do. Hmm. Okay. Well, the thing is that stool doesn't really communicate by a voice. So you're you're probably talking to him and speaking out loud, but he's talking to you in your head. He has control over who he's reporting with. Say so kind of, yeah. Well, it's got its limitations. Uh, everybody. You're 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 in this. You're you're just in this Zirkwood clearing. Yeah, I don't have anything to you about. What if I won't want to tell you? You really want to hear about my life. You humans have it soft. You also like to tear you limb. I've done that plenty of times. Are you trying to hit on me? I would like you to roll me a persuasion check. Run stands up. How tall are you? Approximately five eight. It's about half a, a foot taller than you. He comes close close to you. 
just looks you right in the eyes and the face. Grabs you by the back of the head and kisses you. Very, very aggressively. He 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 pulls you out of out of out of his this this aggressive kiss. And says that what you wanted. You you do you two are like just inches away from each other during this. You do feel a massive hand on your crotch. And he 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 actually starts squeezing it. If you consent, this is mine. He he's not squeezing it hard, but enough to be domineering. <laughs> He starts massaging and says, We get to crackle, Stuke. He, he lets go and just walks away. He, he then kind of like sits down uh, next to one of the the uh, Zirkwood trees and just kind of puts his arms uh, above his head and his legs kind of spread out just a little bit. Lassiter, give me a perception check. Give me a perception check. That boy's well endowed. It is clear. There is VPL. Visible penis line. <laughs> I mean, he's he, he he he's he's looking at you like, yeah, you're my bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he hasn't. He's not. He wasn't speaking loudly or anything, but. It probably did. They probably did notice the kiss. I'm not sure if everybody noticed the the whole hand and crotch thing, considering you were so close together. You've only you've only eaten one, right? Okay, so yeah. Nothing. Nothing. You just, Laster, you just uh, uh, tasted kind of a, a rubbery, spongy texture piece of mushroom. That's, that's all you know. 
Uh, Roderick, you probably did notice at least the kiss. You... You probably didn't... For the, 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 the squeeze? Um, for the squeeze? You probably saw Lassiter uh, clench his butt a little bit. But I don't think you saw what is necessarily the cause of it. Possibly just reaction from the kiss. You're not sure. Mm -hmm. Rant has this this mischievous grin like <laughs> just letting you go all right Mm -hmm. and, I mean, as you as you go as you go to try to like lay down, sleep somewhere else, Ron goes. <clears throat> and uh, he he forces you. He basically has you sleep between his legs. <laughs> sleep between his legs. Maybe his head is on that firm and large. During the night, some legs wrap around you. <laughs> the uh, the uh, heel of a foot is in a certain location. You see little border cat is kind of off to the side looking at you quizzically. Uh, um, you, you see Ron kind of like give your familiar little here. And, and, and poor cat uh, uh, comes up and he holds out his hand as if he's like coming up and, and Borkad climbs up and wraps himself around Ron's uh, neck and Ron just kind of like leans up and uses it off. All right, who's taking first watch? <laughs> Oof. Nova. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll perception check. It does not critically perceive all uh look it around hooting well probably not hooting, but looking around he probably flaps out fly, kind of flies around the entrance to kind of like see everywhere because uh, it is kind of a close space with these tight zirkwood uh between these this tight knit of zirkwood trees um doesn't really see anything uh, just some sounds of coming from the lake, the nearby lake, but otherwise. A quiet watch. Does, does Sova wake anybody up or does he? Okay. 
uh, or, um, yeah, I mean, technically. So she doesn't wake anybody up. <laughs> and, uh, during during the night, little Borkad uh, comes off of uh, the currently uh, sleeping Ront, who's currently got his arm now kind of like wrapped around uh, Laster's neck, uh, whose head is now reached up onto uh, Ront's belly, uh, and um, little Borkad kind of flies out and kind of keeps. Uh, sofa company for for part of the night. It's kind of like, uh, he probably like just flies up next to him and just kind of like sits there, and kind of keeps watch long. Not trying to to get all buddy buddy with with sofa, just. We're too familiar to keeping watch. <laughs> and uh, everybody regains consciousness, realizing uh, you actually saved some time in your sleep because everybody slept. <laughs> uh, yeah, Lassiter, you had a great night. You you wake up with this beefy beefy uh orc hand uh right on top of uh, top of your chest uh the your head just like crooked in his elbow and a uh, little gold pseudo dragon comes uh, flying up and squawks into your face. <laughs> The big orc hand uh, moves up and uh, gives gives some scratches to little Borkhead. You're muted. <laughs> I love the dramatic reaction anytime you find out that you're muted. <laughs> And, and he just nods, and and you get a you get a sense of, of yes. So when I watched all night, everyone's still there. Roderick's probably already up doing stretches. <laughs> Maybe go out to the dark lake and then kind of splash some water in your face. Just giving you options. Right there. A few steps. Sareth is just getting himself ready in the, in the in the other part of the clearing. It's a pretty open space inside this little Zerkwood clearing. Uh, he points toward the dark lake, but just like 
off the shore. All right, as you take off, we're going to take a quick break because I need to refresh my beverage. So let's just take a five minute break. Be right back.
Uh, currently an hour and 42 minutes and an hour and 43 minutes into a run of Resident Evil. By 7 Raid E. 7 Raid. Who's got really creepy makeup on? The of to the awesome and twix schedules. Oh yeah, they, you probably want to watch yeah, to subscribe to their YouTube channel so you can see all the robs. Kind of cool. Yeah, bonus game five Resident Evil. This is Village of Shadows Glitchless that they're doing right now, and they'll have this is the last game of the night, and they'll pick it up. And then it goes to, uh, yeah, they well, they're constantly. So Inglet is going to be on at 12, 12 a.m. Up. Elder Scrolls Four Oblivion is going to be speedrun at 3.49 a.m. Ooh. There's a Stardew Valley glitch con uh, community center restoration run. About uh, four in the morning. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what they. I don't know what time these uh, these AMs are. Pokemon Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire will be on at 3.42 a.m. tomorrow. Hades, there's a Hades run, all weapons race. Uncharted 2 among thieves will be tomorrow night. Saturday looks pretty cool. Wario Land, Shake It, Spider-Man 2, Tetris Attack. Isho Senshi Sailor Moon R for the SNES is going to be run at 6, 6 or 2 a.m. Uh, Saturday. TMNT Out of the Shadows? Is that an EO? I didn't even know it Out of the Shadows. Had... Anyways, it goes for, for a week, so they've been going for a while, but anything will be on the uh, GD website. Anyways, back to back to 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 D&D. Tangent, sorry. Apologize. GDQ. Uh they they do good things. YouTube channel also has uh they also stream like when their events are not on. They do still stream on occasion. Uh their show's called Hot Fix. Um, and VOD's on their YouTube channel. All right, moving on. Uh, I believe you're just starting traveling. We have not rolled for, for travel yet. Did you want to do something the morning before you guys leave? Wellness checks. All the uh, NPC uh, NPCs are are they're doing okay? They're doing good. 
Runt's Runt's giving you the the eye. Thyra. Ront uh, seems to agree with your positioning. Runt's currently in the standing up much straighter and his arms are crossed. If you, if you could see Laster, he has a smile on his face. It's more of a mischievous grin, but still. All right. Who made yesterday's roll? That was uh, Master, uh, so we'll just go ahead and move on over. Cyro, Cyro, roll me a d20. 14. All right, roll me another d20. All right, you're currently into this like really long winding corridor when you feel a uh, tremor. Uh, the ground uh, starts to, to shake and you hear some noise coming from behind. As you uh, turn to look, Ron turns turns behind and looks and says lava swell and uh motions grabs you from the uh, he grabs lasser and pulls him off to the side i need everybody to make me a dexterity check or a dexterity save yeah you're still going to be making one especially considering how how uh, I'll, I will say you you make one make one with advantage, Lassiter. Uh Okay. Mm hmm. As a stream of lava comes flowing, flowing down the center of the corner. Really. He'd probably be, be more saying, ah, lava. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, this stream of lava coming through.
Oh no. So, anybody who rolled less than 10? Takes 19 points of fire damage. There you go. Yeah, yeah. And Ron kind of gave a forewarning. Because Ron and Lassiter are kind of in the back, so. Okay. So everybody who didn't didn't save takes 19 points of damage. Would somebody like to to aid stool in this? <laughs> Uh, okay, so I, I will I will say this say it this way. Stool actually is on Healy's back, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I I didn't I didn't want to kill him. <laughs> So, because I know how how sad some some of you would be. He only has seven HP, so he he would be flat out dead. Uh, he would he would be mushroom soup. Uh, so. Thank, thanks to to Haley Stephanus, he he avoids it. He's quite frightened. Uh, he probably got splashed a little by it and got a little burned, but nothing that really necessarily causes damage uh, from the rush of lava that everybody nearly dodges. That for a few people, such as Jungar and Roderick and Lassiter. Um, oh, wait, last year you did it with advantage, right? So, eight and a nine. So, you uh, uh, burn a foot as uh, right at the top. Oh yeah, Leaf. Did you make some dexterity save? It's good. We lose leaf. Okay. Long. Okay, he saved. Fine. He turned into a bat. <laughs> Briefly. He's one of his wild shapes. Wild shapes. Turned into a bat, so he's now flying above everybody. There we go. That's a great way to avoid it. 
Roderick should have just jumped onto the ceiling. <laughs> but he wasn't quick enough. Ah! Well, you did feel a tremor. So probably some sort of lava tube might have, like, burst and pushed up uh, somewhere behind you. Ouch, 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 hot foot, hot foot, ow. That was Jim Jar. Everybody else seems to have successfully dodged. Hello? Yeah, she's sure. I mean, you can you can bandage it to to help it heal, so it doesn't get infected or what have you. Well, although you've got ways of healing this, this isn't that terrible of fire damage. Yeah, you can you can you can spend this a certain amount of uh, healing light dye. If you want to use that instead instead of casting a spell. I think it's just Roderick and Jim Jar are the only ones who got caught in and you got got caught in it, so each of you took nineteen. Rock on. Run just made it. <laughs> mm -mm. You can only do 3d6 on a person at a time in each instance. Well, uh, it, 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 yeah, so you, you and Jim Jar got 19, Broderick got 19, but he held himself for a little bit. Another 10. So you're now only down by nine. So now the most hurt is Roderick by one. <laughs> he, only, he, he held himself for, for only nine. I mean, you don't have to use it. You don't want to. It's fine.
Oh, I forgot. Hold on. We are one other person that I forgot. Gage. Oh, Gage got hit. <laughs> it is down by 19. I mean, you're not in combat, so you can. You're gonna do. He'll he'll gauge for four. Uh, it is all right. I am sure we'll be resting soon. Thank you. I hope I do him proud. The underdog seems very dangerous. Uh, uh, George like, uh, not, uh, really. I mean, we, we are kind of in this, uh, the uh, underground, so you never know when any sort of run into some sort of lava tubes. Very important you take, take care for where you dig if you're doing some mining or something like that. Uh, we've been known to have those type of circumstances, but we know how to avoid them too. I mean, there's lava tubes all over the place, so you never know when they would show up, so you got to be careful. That's all. Exactly. I mean, what's the likelihood that we're going to actually run into one of these? It sounded like there was some sort of tremor, some sort of earthquake, which, you know, popped a bubble or something that, that broke through the crust and some lava came spurting out and came running down here. Show you going, my boy. All right, head out. All right, need some survival checks. Let's do it for funsies. Uh, Gage is no help. Anybody who wants to help. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Eldith spots a, a nice little uh, uh, cavern uh, hidden by some shadows. Although it is a very dark portion of the Underdark. Mm-hmm.
and you all start camping out. Anything you would like to do before you bed down? Um, uh, not really. It seems to be more of just cavern, cavern. Not, not much, or cave, cave, or go corridor, just rock. You actually haven't really seen much of the Dark Lake itself. You don't feel like you've moved too far off of it, but you seem to have, to have gotten to a point where the Dark Lake has been obscured. Or you've been separated from the Dark Lake, but you don't feel like you've moved too much far from it. If that makes sense. We are getting closer. I would say. We are about two ten days away from the grove. <laughs> Rest for the watch. That one to get back to Grecklestug. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, the disorc apparently is at least modest enough not to take advantage of his prey uh, in sight of party members and you're not really in a place where you could kind of like go off to the side and a brown chicken brown cow so once you get the crackle stoog Right. Uh, comes up to you while you're on on uh, watch and everybody's resting, and he whispers in your ear, "Is careful not to break yourself. I'm the one will break you." And then I'll be in the back. He'll just go to the back of the cave. He'll get into his normal position of just. Legs open, a great place for you to rest when you're you're done with your watch. He just lays back, and little Borkad uh, is sitting next to you, looks up at you, back at Ron. Uh, and you 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 sense that he shrugs his shoulders, and he just kind of curls up next to you as you're taking your watch. Okay. Um, I would like you to uh, roll me a perception check with advantage. Okay. 
Okay. What's that smell? You smell something. You look back behind you. And being a human, you would need light. So do you have light on something or? You have devil sight, so you do have dark vision. So you'd look back and there's a smell coming. You, you get this like different types of smells, but you, you pick out one in particular that's coming from Ront. Uh, and it in the dark, he's got a smile on his face and his hand in his pants. It is distracting. You're also getting this t slight fishy smell. Uh, you also do get um, a pleasant, you do, do you also get this pleasant smell coming from Cyrus direction. Uh, you do smell sweat. Various different body odors. <laughs> Coming from just everybody in the cave. Uh, you've probably been on watch for probably it, it's, I mean, you start smelling these like immediately and then about half an hour into your watch is when you kind of like, like, okay, what, what is that? And you look back and notice front with his hand in his pants. Sure. Oh, that's not really happening. Um, you don't notice uh as something passes. <laughs> You, 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 as you're being distracted by all these smells, you, you turn around and just to notice the tail end of uh, some sort of wagon uh, as it goes into another corridor. Yeah, mm -hmm. you didn't notice it pass by. <laughs> you were so distracted by the smells coming from your compatriots <laughs> that you didn't notice it pass by. <laughs> And apparently they didn't notice you, so. I mean, as far as you can tell, looking around, you'd see this cart wheel off and you didn't see anything afterwards. I mean, you would have to follow it. You saw the very tail end of it.
Uh, I would say... I'd say they're probably equidistant. Oh, I'm watching. Oh, okay. You don't go take, take, uh, okay. Right. Uh, you do laying down in his lap. You do feel wet spot. All right, who wants to take their watch? Okay. Uh, feel a gentle nudge. I believe it is your turn to take watch. Nothing happened. Zareth walks off and goes to sleep. Welcome back. Roderick. You see, uh, you hear uh, some planks of what sounds like some, some chains. And you see three uh, dwarves run uh, almost past the uh, cave that you're in. They currently have manacles on. And they're running past the, the cave that you guys are in. Uh, do you speak Dwarvish? All right. There, there's this... Do you think we're being followed? I don't know. We're making kind of loud noise. Is there any place we can get quiet down? I don't see any good rocks to break these off. What can I do? Uh, yeah. Ah! They turn around it, it to you and... They're all, they're like shaking. Oh. <sighs> Sturgar had captured us. We found that we were we were by and the things that they're. <sighs> We were, 
we were captured by some Duergar and they 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 enslaved us to do mining and we found a chance to get away and we were we've been running for a couple few hours that direction and uh, they point from the direction the general direction that you were heading before you made camp yes Sorry, 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 sorry. All right. Uh, roll me, uh, I will definitely say athletics check. Wisdom athletics check in your case. All right. Uh, you're able to uh, successfully break. Um. You feel, for some reason, you feel that you could probably, the the manacles are pretty solid, but you feel that you could probably crack them so that the manacles themselves come off. So you reach, your astral arms reach down and like, you hear this kind of like slight humming noise and all of a sudden <coughs> the, the medicals break. Three of them. anything would be able to help you could also provide information about edible mushrooms too Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And, and they uh, run off, uh, and it seems like they're they're also looking for a place to camp out. Um, having described possibly the place where you camped out before, they, it looks like they're heading that general direction. Mm hmm Rao aren't the only ones who take slaves. The rest of the the rest of your watch uh, receives without incident. Fourth watch.
or so so that comes over to over to you and goes whoo and then kind of like pokes pokes his head against her with like like you could enter it that it's just telling you go ahead and go back to sleep <laughs> and he kind of like perches on a rock and starts looking out all of a sudden this little gold pseudo dragon comes up and squawks at you and sits down next to uh Sova and the two keep watch. Borkad. Um no, you don't have to. Um yeah, uh, it, it's pretty much as Sova's actually really doing the watch. Borkad's really terrible about, about doing a watch. Not that he's not perceptive or anything, but he's just not interested in doing a watch. He's just kind of like, hey, we're both familiars. <laughs> we're buddies. Sova's have none of, uh, having none of it, but as long as Borkad isn't bugging <laughs> Sova, Sova doesn't do anything, just leaves him alone. <laughs> Uh, and you all wake up at the beginning of the day, question mark? Uh, there is an orc hand on your face, Lassiter. Uh, and you f suddenly feel a little tug. Uh, pulling you up, and uh, you hear sweet nothings being whispered in your ear about some really dirty and, well, you're not sure whether you should be aroused or frightened. And that's where we're in the session for tonight. Characters don't know it, but uh, you are about five days away from Crackle's Three. Five more days of this nonsense. This is one part part about the indie that I don't enjoy as much as travel, but I felt it's more fun to try to torture my victims <laughs> with travel and insanity. No. Mm -mm. Nah. So, thanks everybody for watching. I know a thrilling encounters had by all. Little brown chicken, brown cow. Tiger beetle. What is that? Mm -hmm. No, certainly not.